<laughs> Thanks, so I'm going to talk about uh, automating some of your data analysis uh, testing. So you can follow me on Twitter, and uh, I've created a Jupyter notebook of all the code that I'm going to go through uh, that you can look at as we go along. Um, so a little bit about my background. I studied economics, and then I went into educational research, and now I'm in what's called institutional research, which is working with the university's data to uh, make decisions, essentially. And if you all remember the sort of that adage that there's that 80 to 80-20 split of like prepara preparing your data and, uh, and then actually doing the analysis, well, I was basically, for a large part of my career, I've been that, that 80 percent, and that's what I did. So I do, do a lot of work preparing data and, and writing code to uh, prepare data sets for analysis. So when I heard about test-driven development and, and testing, I, I saw it, but I wasn't quite sure how to prepare, uh, how to apply it to data preparation. Um, so what I did is I, I uh, applied, I created some tests uh, to, to kind of uh, test, my, test my data code for a project that I worked on. And, uh, and I said, oh, this is great, I'm, I'm doing, uh, doing unit testing. And then I run my little test suite, and it takes actually longer than the length of this talk to run. And then I was reading somewhere, it's like, unit tests should be fast. <laughs> and you could just run them as you go. So, how do I reconcile this? So we've seen the introduction. Uh, I'm going to talk a little about the PyTest uh, test framework. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the testing uh, methods available in NumPy testing. Uh, so this will be primarily for using NumPy and Pandas. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about unit tests and how you would use them. Um, then uh, testing your, the resulting data that you generate as part of your process. And then talk about comparing data frames together. So PyTest is a major Python test framework. Uh, one nice thing is that it actually will run unit tests and nose tests as well. So you don't have to rewrite your test if you already have them. Uh, and it works by rewriting assert statements. So it actually makes the, the syntax is a little easier to use because you, um, you don't have to write special uh, assert statements. But the feature that I really like and that's really useful for data analysis testing is the fixtures. So you can apply this fixture decorator to a function, and then uh, it will be some code that supports your test but is not included in your test. So if you have, if you say generate a fake data set that you want to use for testing, uh, you only have to generate that once. So it speeds things up. So a little example. Um, so all you do is apply this fixture decorator, and you would write a function. Let's say this is the function that pulls the data that my process has generated out of the database. Um, so I use SQL Alchemy. I've like created a thing to create my engine, and then I initiate it, and then I just read the output table. So I just have to do that once, just grab that data, and then it's available for all the tests in my test module. So then if I want to use it, say in this case, so I work a lot with student data, so one of the things you want to do is make sure that, okay, the, tab the table that I've generated, it only has one record for each individual student. So I want to say, is it unique or not? That's a test I might want to run. Uh, so the key is there you have your output data. That's the function that you created the fixture, and you just put that in, and then you can refer to that in your function. So you could see, is it, not du is it duplicated or not? Um, so for doing testing of uh, NumPy arrays or Pandas data frames, the other thing you can use is NumPy testing. And it actually has a bunch of methods for comparing different uh, arrays. And, does, and it even has methods for making sure they're close enough. So if you're working with numerical data, you might not really care if it's really close. You, wanna, you might consider that equal uh, if you have rounding issues or that sort of stuff. It works really well with PyTest. You just use those instead of the regular assert. The one wrinkle, if you're using Pandas, it takes NumPy arrays, not Pandas data frames. But there's a nice set of methods for data frame and series values will return an underlying uh, NumPy array. So the tools that I've kind of showed you will let you actually write unit tests. Um, and so this kind of, this, at this part, you, you want to think about how you want to structure your data preparation code. So for it to be testable, you should be breaking it down into small functions. Um, and then you think of a test for all different cases, and then you can create some fake data, and then just uh, cover all of that. So, not really going to go 
too much into that, but that, that, that's something you can do for your, for your data preparation code. Um, okay. So if you want to get into, um, if you want to actually, so aside from the testing your code itself, you want to test the results of that code, the data set that comes out of it at the other end. So one method you can use is to do some descriptive statistics on your data, and are they, what, are they actually what they expect? And so Pandas actually has this describe method for the data frame and series, which will give you some basic descriptive statistics on that, and you can see if they're about what you expect. So you can see what the mean is, and if the min, max and min, if those are reasonable within what you're expecting. As I said, you can also check to see if you have unique uh, observations, and that your columns are the expected type, and if they're in the expected range. So this is really easy to do. So um, you'll see in the, on my GitHub page, I've created a little data set. It's all just random data uh, and the columns I just named after Toronto uh, subway stations. Um, and you can see there's, uh, this is the describe command here. Um, and it will just give you your counts, your, your counts, your means, standard deviation, Min and max. So you can kind of see these are all supposed to be from 1 to 24, and they all have a you know, similar mean. So you can kind of see, is, is, this, within, is this 10 within the sort of uh, range, or is that something I need to watch out for? So you can do that. You can just have a look, a descriptive look at what you're getting out. But uh, really what you might want to do is compare uh, data frames together. So you might want to compare the, oh, sorry. Um, you might want to, you ha if you have an existing output of your code, you can compare the current output to your previous version. So what I like to do is you could store that in a database uh, and then give it a timestamp or maybe even stamp it with the, the version of your software that, you're, that you ran and then give it sort of a reliability sort of thing. Is this, this solid data or is this data that I'm like still working on development level data? And then you just compare against the, that last solid version. Um, and this is really useful if you have legacy, that is, there, there's no unit test code. So if you've, if you've created this process, you're pretty confident that it works, but you, you're a little afraid of changing it, because what if you introduce an error and cause problems in your data? You can actually take that and compare the two data frames together, see if they're uh, going to be, uh, see if the changes that, you, that come up are expected. So fortunately, there's a whole bunch of nice tools built into Pandas to do this. So, the tricky part is this really relies on knowing your data. There's, I didn't really come up with a, 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 a package to actually do this for you because I think you actually need to know your data before you implement how you compare, compare it. So as I said, if you have a unique row and column index, it's, a, it's pretty useful um, because then you can just check to see if columns and rows exist. And you should, you know, if, you, if you're dealing with that kind of data, you probably can figure out a way to do that. Um, so you put the unique identifiers in the index, and it, Pandas lets you have hierarchical indexes. So if you have, and it keeps doing that. Uh, if you have hierarchical indexes, you can go, uh, you can put multiple fields in one uh, index. So there's a couple of useful functions in NumPy and Pandas. There's the set diff one, which will give you the difference. Into, you have two arrays, it'll give you what the difference is from x, the things that are in y that aren't in x, and then you give the intersection um, of the two. And those are really useful for checking to see if columns exist or which columns two fra data frames share in column. And then you can use the, the loc uh, indexing to take that list of index indices and just return a data frame that gives you it. So we have two data frames from my little data set. They're slightly different. Uh, but I want to see how in a really easy way. So first thing you can do is look at what the differences between the two indexes are. So these are the ones that are, these are rows that are removed. You have the first, um, first index, uh, the, yeah, the new, the new data frame and the old one. So these are the ones that are removed from there. So we have this row five is removed. Um, yeah, so row two is removed, row five is added. You just reverse them. Then we have the columns that are removed, and uh, then columns that are added. So it's really easy to, to do that. Then you want to compare two data frames together. So you want to actually compare the same rows. So um, this, what this does is you get the 
This will give you the intersection between the two data frames, uh, sort of the two indices, and put those in rows and columns. And you can kind of create the same, like a, two data frames that have exactly the same rows. So you can compare what those are. Uh, and then this code lets you highlight the differences. So they'll give you the, the rows that are different, the columns that are different. And then that one will let you do the, uh, will strip out anything that is the same within those rows. And this, this is what it gives you. Um, so you'll see that these things changed and how they changed. So it'll, it's a good way to detect patterns in the changes of your data. So you can see, it doesn't match the changes that I made to my code. Um, so if you want to automate this process, you might want to look at the number of rows and columns that are added and removed, sort of compare the total. Um, and then you want to see, are the differences clustered in a particular column? Okay, that's good. There's the code. Thanks. <laughs>